This is a $2.83 stock. And what's their dividend yield? 15.9%. Hey guys, today I wanted to touch on a subject which is talked about quite a bit. When it comes to investing, there's different types of strategies. And one thing that has been talked about a bit is which is better when it comes to investing in stocks buying for growth or buying for dividends so we're gonna look at a couple of scenarios today and i should say when i'm talking about growth i may not be talking about the technical definition that you think about when you think of growth but I'm simply talking about a stock that grows in value every year. Maybe five years ago, that stock was $70. Now it's $370 or it's $400 because it's growing in value every year. And is it a better investment to buy for growth or to buy for dividends so first i'm gonna make use of the stock sage app to find some stocks that could be growing each year and as we see this app looks for every stock on the 52 week low that day that has three or more positive earnings years positive earnings per share meaning in our case from 1990 uh, from 2019 to 2023 we see that there's a number of companies that fell to the 52 week low friday that have positive earnings but now i'm going to narrow that group down some so i'm going to say show me the ones that have current assets greater than current liabilities because all of them have total assets greater than total liabilities. Now the list gets not much, but a little bit shorter. I'm gonna say, show me the ones that have greater than 10% profit margin on the income statement. Now the list gets considerably smaller we're down to four companies now i can even say show me the ones with let's say they bought back stocks for at least three of the five years and the list is now at three companies so let's check these three companies i like to see the earnings per share increasing every year and in our case we don't have any of those actually Tootsie Roll is probably the closest Yeah, Tootsie Roll is probably the closest. And if we look at Tootsie Roll, let's see how it's done over the last five years. $24 to $33, 24 to $33, $25 to $50, $28 to $43. It's increasing a little. 27 to 44 so that's growth it's increasing a little but not much it it moved up let's say the high price in 2019 was 33 high price in 2023 was 44 so it's increasing a little but not considerably but if we look at the dividend the dividend is 
0.25% for the dividend yield. So the dividend they're paying is not much. But I'm going to show you something that Stocksage has now added. And that is dividend yield. So I can come to this filter and click greater than 4%. And it's going to show me every stock at the 52-week low that day with positive earnings for at least three or greater of the last five years that has a greater than 4% dividend yield. So let's look at a few of them. Havity Furniture, and this is an interesting company. You probably never heard of Havity Furniture, but have you heard of Sealy, Stearns and Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Serta? All of them are under Havity Furnitures. And this company has a dividend yield of 8.88%. It's a $25 company with a 8.88% dividend yield. Let's go back and we have Donegal. Donegal Group they are a $12.42 company with a 5.5% dividend yield. Now notice, we're not even looking at the fundamentals for these companies yet, guys. I'm just showing you that the app separates the companies with a 4% or greater dividend yield out from the rest of them. And we'll see how we can use that information a little later. We have... I'm going to move down a little to one that I've seen earlier. This is Diana Shipping. Now, this is not a suggestion to buy it because notice for the last five years, the low PE ratio has been one at one twice and at five once. And now it's at 13. So this stock can drop a lot further. But just to look at it, this is a $2.83 stock. And what's their dividend yield? 15.9%. So now, the Stock Sage app separates not only fundamentally sound companies, meaning companies that regularly do stock buybacks, have current assets greater than current liabilities, they have a solemn balance sheet, and they have a 10% or greater profit margin. But it also separates companies that have a dividend yield greater than 4%. Now, in this situation, there are no stocks that have all of these fundamentals in place and they have a dividend yield greater than 4%. As of this Friday, you had a number of companies with a dividend yield greater than 4%, but they didn't have all of these as well. Maybe they had stock buybacks as well as current assets greater than current liabilities, we had four of those. But their current assets, I mean, but their profit margins weren't greater than 10%. Let's see if any of them are moving up every year. Well, actually, Diana Shipping is one of them. That's the one that we said with a 15% dividend yield. 
11 cents in 2019. Then they dropped in 2020. That was the COVID lockdown year. 96 cents in 2021. $1.49 in 2022. But in 2023, they dropped to 50 cents. And then if we look further, in 2024, they're projected at 21 cents so far. That's an even further drop. And we see that they're at a high P ratio because their current low P ratio is 13.48. But the low P ratio in 2023 was five. It was one in 2022 and it was one in 2021. So let's see. It was 1.54 in 2022. Let's say it drops to 1.54 again. Multiply that by the current projected earnings per share. Oh, let me do that again. 1.54 times point 0.21. That's the projected earnings per share for 2024. And that gives us 32 cents. So if this stock were to drop to a P ratio of 1.54 again, it would drop from its current price of $2.83 to $0.32 cents a share. But having said that, it is giving us a current dividend yield of 15.9%. So let's say I added it to the watch list. And I watched it until it stopped dropping. And then bought it on the way back up. I'm getting a 15.9% dividend yield. Now, if we look at the profit margin, not 10%, but that was really because of 2019 and 2020. 2020, COVID lockdown year, they lost money. 2019, the profit margin was 4.77%. But in 2023, it was 36.25. 2022, it was 41.06. And 2023, it was 19.02. So the last three years, three years have given us a pretty decent profit margin. And the earnings or the return on equity the last three years was 19.74%, 24.43%, and 10.19%, with all debt to equities under 200%, 114.07, 142.74, and 138.52, which means it's a pretty decent balance sheet all around. Now, this company, we know they paid the dividend the last five years. And in 2021, they issued more stock than they bought back. Same in 2022. But in 2019, they bought back more than they issued. And in 2020, they didn't issue any. They just bought back. 2023 was even with both. But when it comes to the free cash flow, we see that in 2019, 2020, and 2021, they had enough money to pay that dividend. But in 2022, they were negative free cash flow, meaning 
they were even more negative after paying the dividend. And in 2023, they were positive, 36,918,000 in free cash flow. But after paying that dividend, they were negative 10278000 So they probably had to borrow money just to pay you that healthy dividend. But they maintained that 15% dividend. In any event, Diana Shipping is in the marine shipping industry, industrial sector. And wow, how do I say this name? Miss Semiramis Palua, born 1975, is the CEO and director. She was appointed in March of 2021, replacing her father. So this is an interesting company to be looking at. But I just bring them up to show you the example of the dividend in that now not only is Stock Sage giving you fundamentally healthy companies, companies that could be growing in value from year to year, but also companies that give you a healthy dividend. In this case, they're separate. We have all of these companies giving great dividends that Stocksage is showing us, and we can click on them one by one to see what dividend they're offering. But in some cases, not this Friday, but in some cases, you may check all these things off to find a fundamentally sound company and click here and see that there's also fundamentally sound companies offering you a greater than 4% dividend. And you're seeing all of that in a matter of under a minute because we have all of these filters available for us in the app. But in any event, here was our list of companies that hit the 52-week low this week that had dividends or dividend yields, I should say, above 4%. And the great thing about that is not only are these companies with dividend yields that are above 4%, but they're companies that are at their annual low price. So you can actually click on the company. Let's go to American Software. American Software is at $8.72. They have a 5.05% dividend yield. Their current P ratio is 30.07. Now their low PE ratio for the last five years has been 37 37.93, 37.82, 59.39, 33.04 and 29.75. So only one year was the P.E. ratio lower than it is right now. Just one year was lower than it is right now. And in that one year when it was lower than it is right now, it was only slightly lower. It's at 30.07 now. And it was at 29.75 last year in 2023. That's 0.32 cents. So the PE ratio is just about at the low 
of where it's been in the last five years. And generally, when you see a company's low P.E. ratio is high like that, that means this is a company that's in demand. People are buying it. We were looking at Diana Shipping. We were seeing P.E. ratios of one. That means it's not as much interest in it before people jump in and start buying. This stock, they really don't even let the P.E. ratio fall to 25 before they're buying it and driving the price back up. So, like we said before, Stock Sage has now added a dividend yield filter showing you stocks with a 4% or greater dividend. And if you come across a situation where you have a stock that has stock buybacks for all five years, current assets greater than current liabilities, greater than 10% profit margin, and they have a dividend yield higher than 4%, now it's almost like you guys are hitting the lottery. That's what you're looking for. But despite that, you still have tons of companies showing up in the app. Here's four companies right off the bat with stock buybacks for the last five years, current assets greater than current liabilities, total assets greater than total liabilities. Only thing is, their profit margin is not 10% for all five years, and they have a 4% or greater dividend yield. We have Haverty, LCI, Diana, and Big Five. I like to look for companies where the earnings per share is increasing every year. We sort of see that with Haverty except they fell back in 2023. Let's see what happened in 2024, if they move back up or continue to move back. In 2024, so far, it's not the end of the year yet. We're still just in June, but they're at $2.76 so far. In any event, this is a $25 company, 8.88% dividend yield. Their current P ratio is 9.06, and let's look where it's been in the previous years. In, In 2020, they were at two, but that was the COVID lockdown year. In 2021, they were at four. 2022, they were at three. In 2023, they were at six. So this stock can still fall considerably. Let's see what would happen if they were to fall to 4.22 again. 4.22 times 2.76 equals, that's $11.64. So from $25.01 to $11.64. So these P.E. ratios, guys, can go a long way to showing you where a stock could fall to by looking at the low P.E. ratios. But just to know, this app is now showing you 
all of the stocks that have dividend yields greater than 4%. And you can combine that with the fundamentals on the app. Stock buybacks, current assets greater than current liabilities, and profit margins greater than 10% or greater than 20%. So in any event, guys, now it doesn't have to be a matter of whether you're just looking for growth or whether you're just looking for dividends with this new feature added to the Stock Sage app. You can actually be looking to benefit from both at the same time. A company that's growing that you're buying at its annual low price and it also has a very healthy dividend yield. In any event, I look forward to speaking to you in the next video and remember, please go to StockSageSoftware.com if you want to benefit from these features and subscribe to the Stock Sage app. It is only $129, not a month, but $129 a year to have access to all of this valuable information. Okay, guys, have a great night. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.